Force Center is a Disney Star Wars shill podcast. They praise everything Disney Star Wars does. They loved the Acolyte and to this day refuse to admit that it was canceled. I've been seeing a lot online, especially like around the discussion of the Acolyte, where people were like, they had to use the word canceled because they were under contract. And I'm like, you guys don't, you guys think you know, you don't know how contracts work. It's like, just because you do a Star Wars show or three Star Wars films does not mean you're under contract for life. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? They are also best friends with Star Wars cross-dressing Sexplained and even went as far to defend them after they received backlash for trying to demonetize and de-platform other content creators. We love Alex and Molly Damon have for years and the dumpster fire that is uh, Star Wars social media uh, exploded this week and in the, in the middle of that was uh, two wonderful people, Alex and Molly Damon. What a fucking bitch, am I right? <laughs> and just when you thought it couldn't get any worse they absolutely love ray palpatine why well, I, I love the character of ray and devoted an entire episode of their podcast to praising her you gotta be shitting me I, I thought it was a good good opportunity for us to sort of touch base why we personally like ray what is compelling about her character absolutely nothing <laughs> okay first up is the broad on the bottom Jennifer, what is compelling to you about Ray? Why do you like her? And I guarantee she wrote down a list prior to recording this episode of everything she loved about Ray and then proceeds to just read it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I love her scrappiness. I love that she is stubborn in the best way. I like that she's a loner um, and she's survived on her own. But at the same time, she really longs for belonging. Doesn't explain why or how Ray is all of these wonderful things. Doesn't cite any examples from the movies to help reinforce the ridiculous point she's making. Probably because there aren't any. Who cares? Because Ray is great. She's she's a badass, but she's also, like I said, vulnerable. How full of shit are you? And then she says something that shocked even me. She actually came out and said that Ray is a great character because she's made for modern audiences. But there was something very um, modern. She feels like a modern, quote unquote, modern girl. Um, and she's strong. She's athletic. She's tough. She's also vulnerable. She is a three dimensional character. Her. Jedi desire in, in, in Rise of Skywalker is to be able to commune with the Jedi of the past. And in that moment in Rise of Skywalker, communing with the Jedi of the past, they're basically, basically just like, you got that. And then she stands up and does it. Yes, of course she does it because she's written to be perfect. She never fails at anything. And in, in that is, is her character. <laughs> well, it sucks. I, I, you know, I, I stood within f four feet of, of Daisy Ridley once at a premiere, and and, and it's like you want to you want to say something, you want to be like, mm -hmm. I love what you're doing. I'm not even going to say anything. It's so embarrassing. God, now we have top left guy, and honestly, I think he is the worst of the three. Jakku, I always say it's one of the best intros of a character in one of these fantasy high high fantasy type of series. What? Her sitting there. Having a having a snack outside of a fallen ad at with the uh, you know Tierfon yellow Tierfon Aces helmet on is one of my favorite moments in Star Wars. This type of shit is exactly what these Disney shills feel they have to say in order to get noticed by Disney and invited to things. That is exactly what we are watching here, and these three desperately want to get invited to the Ray movie press screening. And I'm always rooting for her. I've, I've been rooting for her since 2015, and, and I'm looking forward to continue that uh, cheering. You're a bitch. You know what? Do me a favor. Smash the like button if you are looking forward to the Ray movie bombing at the box office. Do it. And speaking of the Ray movie. But one thing I think that we're all excited about in different ways is the, uh, the possibility of this announced Ray New Jedi Order film. And there was a very short but very interesting article uh, with Daisy Ridley. And yes, this is the article where she blames men for the failure of her character, and we will get into that here shortly. But before that, she was asked about coming back as Rey, to which she said, My thinking on the subject is very simple. If I didn't think the story was worth telling, I wouldn't have come back. <laughs> the interviewer says, 
but you had the choice to refuse? <laughs> Daisy Ridley says, yes, of course. Okay, enough. Daisy Ridley is coming back for the money. She has nothing else going on in her career, so she jumped at the opportunity to come back and play this character again. I mean, what else is she going to say when these two idiots walk up to her and say, hey, Daisy, we'd love for you to come back and play Ray again, and we're going to pay you significantly more money than you deserve. She's just like, I like the idea. The core idea is there. And I have enough faith in this, you know, relationship with Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> so then Daisy was asked about the controversy surrounding her character. And Shill Center, as I will be calling them from now on, defends her answer on it. Daisy Ridley responds to that question. No, no. Uh, I know that some people have expressed themselves negatively, but I don't pay attention to it because it doesn't really concern me. I can't change the way some men see women. Oh, here we go. What she's talking about is is Ray is a part of a larger conversation that's going on of uh, uh, of the way that people react to any change <laughs> where everything isn't the exact same type of person as the star. Triggered. This is the way this is the way this has been going for a long time. About, about society being broken on, on how they deal with change, how they deal with um, uh, groups uh, uh, that are othered uh, and that they want to keep othered and, and keep smaller. Uh, so I, I think when you're faced with that tidal wave, this approach works. Daisy's approach works, huh? Well, that's ironic because you and your friend's approach to dealing with the toxic fandom, as you call it, is to demonetize, deplatform, and attempt to cancel, isn't it? 100%. And finally, as this horrible episode of a podcast winds down, they proceed to express their hopes and desires that the Ray movie happens. I just hope it gets made, because right now mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. This, by the way, was the only acknowledgement in this entire podcast episode that things are not looking good for the Ray movie. But I, I'll tell you, I think, I think it's going to get made. I think it's going to happen. And, and I have a, you know, is it blind faith? Great. That's sometimes all, all you need in life. Pathetic. I really have a lot of um, uh, desire and hope and faith that this film will come out. I hope that the Ray movie comes out as well, simply for the damage it will undoubtedly do to Disney Star Wars. I said before it came out that the Acolyte was going to be Disney Lucasfilm's She-Hulk, and it was. It might have actually been worse. The Ray movie is going to be Disney Lucasfilm's The Marvels, and it will, like The Marvels, bomb at the box office. Thanks for watching. Here's some other Ray Shill videos you can check out already live on the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.